There is something unorthodox brewing in the Scandinavian construction industry, and it is quite baffling, and for some even disturbing, despite the rosy chatter and fancy green and sustainability data associated with it. They want the world to stop building with concrete and steel and start building exclusively with timber that is sourced from sustainable and even bioengineered forests. As it seems, many Scandinavian construction firms, along with some architecture and design firms, have come to believe that building entire cities from timber across the globe will help in reducing CO2 emissions by up to 26%. To prove their point, they are proceeding with a mega project that will give birth to a colossal real estate development in Stockholm by 2027 that is exclusively built from timber and intriguingly will include a 20-level high-rise. What on earth are they building? Is cutting down sustainable forests to obtain timber a green sustainable solution, as they say? And how will they build a modern city town, including high-rises, using only timber? Let's start with some details about this project. Wood City is set to replace an old industrial zone called Sikla in the southern parts of Stockholm. This area has been nothing but an eyesore for beautiful Stockholm because it is full of former factory buildings, parking lots, and other hideous and old plain structures. The development will commence in 2025 and finish in 2027. It will cover approximately 62 acres, making it the largest mass timber development in the world. The development will include 7,000 new offices, 2,000 new housing units, a mall, numerous restaurants, retail outlets, and pretty much everything a person would need within a 15-minute walk at the most. The construction process is not experimental since the builder, Atrium Lundberg, owns a 20-story timber high-rise nearby and is planning to build another one in Wood City. However, most buildings will range between three and five levels, since the city is designed to give people a serene sense of living in a small modern town that is forest-like and dominated by woody scents. Mind you that for most people, woody scents result in good emotions that are warm, earthy, and reassuring. In fact, woody scents form the most important base notes to many famous fragrances, which are built on underlying notes of bark, moss, and wood oils. A new subway line will be opened in the area to connect Wood City to the center of Stockholm. The final product will be a dense, green city area with circular and sustainable principles built into the whole ecosystem. Another benefit from this development is the addition of office space in an area that is known for workplace shortages. Now, before we tell you about other details such as construction methods, fire safety, and unique features including energy conservation, let's tackle the elephant in the room. Is sustainable timber a realistic replacement for concrete and steel? The reason why they call sustainable timber a green building material has to do with the fact that the most commonly used building materials these days are concrete and steel, which are very dirty and make construction and related supply chains one of the biggest emitters of CO2. Meanwhile, sustainable timber relies on planting more trees than cutting them, and as you already know, more trees can mitigate climate change effects, while cleaning out air from CO2 and other pollutants too, since many types of trees also absorb toxins from the air. It is important to clarify here that Wood City will be built from timber that is sourced solely from sustainable forests. This means that it is coming from forests where more trees are planted and growing than removed and or new commercial forests that are designed as a source of sustainable timber. By the way, just to remove any confusion, wood becomes timber once it is treated and prepped as a construction material. So is sustainable timber a feasible and green replacement for concrete and steel on a global scale? The answer is complex because such an endeavor would require hundreds of billions of dollars in investments from both the private and public sectors in three things. Protecting existing forests across the globe while ensuring that more trees are planted than cut, 
planting billions of bioengineered trees that grow rather fast, specifically for timber sourcing, and securing sustainable water resources. Mind you that water is a huge issue because in many parts of the world, achieving sustainable forests requires the construction of dams, artificial rivers, mega wastewater treatment plants, advanced irrigation systems, desalination plants, and green power sources such as solar, wind, and blue energy farms. Sustainable timber alone is also not exactly an ideal solution because there are plenty of other green building materials that can also play a major role in the shift to more sustainable building materials. Let's now discuss the details of Wood City and how it will be built. We can tell from renderings for Wood City that it is almost entirely made from timber with plenty of large glass and wood facades, keeping a primarily rectilinear form. The ground level of most buildings features large spanning glass that opens interior lobbies to sunlight, which is crucial for energy preservation, while windows on upper floors are recessed within the logic of the wooden grid structure. The balcony and terrace spaces feature plenty of plants, while the streets are lined with trees and open concept dining outlets and cafes that resemble gardens. The streets are designed to be pedestrian and cycling friendly with plenty of green space for socializing. To construct modern structures exclusively from timber, special engineering tricks must be applied to ensure fire safety, energy conservation, strength, and preservation of water and moisture related damages that also causes mold and termite infestations. Once a part of a sustainable forest is cut off, the wood is transferred via mostly electric trucks to advanced factories that are powered by renewables and equipped with all sorts of machines that process the timber into different sizes and shapes as needed. Mind you that many of the buildings have concrete foundations. Additionally, the walls, floors, columns, structural beams, and most other parts are made inside the factory and then shipped to the site for assembly. In a nutshell, they are prefabricated buildings. They are using mostly cross-laminated timber and laminated veneer lumber because these types of wood are quite resilient and can handle immense pressure, thus enabling the construction of higher buildings. Various parts are made by fixing several timber boards in an alternating manner with strong adhesives and compression resulting in versatile products. For tall buildings, the load-bearing columns and beams, which are very crucial for structural integrity, are made the same way, but the timber boards are glued in layers in the same direction rather than in an alternating manner, because the pressure on columns and beams is vertical since the weight comes from one direction. This method is called glue laminated timber. One might think that wood is weak. However, timber, which is much lighter than steel and concrete, has been engineered to withstand the same pressure, elements of nature, and load bearing as steel. The advancements in technology today enable engineers to build timber high rises up to 80 meters tall, and they are aiming for higher. However, one of the biggest concerns is fire. In many parts of the world, they do not use any timber, drywall, or insulation in construction. They only use steel reinforced concrete, bricks, and ceramic tiles. As a result, fires spread slowly and generally speaking, do not cause intensive structural damage. Meaning once a fire is contained, repairs are rather easy and affordable. However, as history tells us, structures made from timber and buildings with plenty of standard non-fireproof drywalls and insulation or wood floors burn faster and the structural integrity is easily compromised, leading to expensive repairs or demolition. And even though fire retardants are now used to make timber less flammable, while other technologies such as fire-resistant plasterboards, along with standard fire sprinklers, can and do make timber structures quite safe. The fact remains that a building made from concrete slabs and columns, brick walls, ceramic floors, and no drywall is safer than steel-only structures and much, much safer than timber-based buildings. This fact, coupled with the colossal costs associated with shifting to timber as a replacement for concrete and steel, means that Wood City and similar projects are only feasible, green, and viable in the most rich nations with deep pockets, plenty of sustainable forests, and endless water resources. Thank you for watching, and please do share, like, subscribe, and feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comments section.